when we're importing footage, we're importing it into our project bar up here. And what you'll notice um, in this little bar on the, the bottom left, where we have project, media browser, library, uh, info, effects, and all that kind of stuff, is that not all the items fit in there. So there's actually other items listed um, down here as well, such as uh, markers and history and all that kind of stuff. Um, so you can actually scroll across here so it's possible to lose your project uh, tab there, um, kind of lose sight of it. So if you feel like you've lost it, don't panic, just click on this little double arrow at the right and you should see project and then the name of your project um, listed there as well. But sometimes, especially when you're working on a um, like lower resolution laptop like I am now, it can get all a bit squished as well. Um, so basically, um, this is where we're gonna import our media. So if we go to file and import, it will let us navigate uh, to the folder where we have our footage, okay? And if we select the video footage first, we're not gonna worry about audio um, for the moment. So we can select individual files or we can select the whole folder. We'll select the whole folder, it's easier. Okay. And it's gonna put it in a bin here. And if we double click on that bin, it will make a new tab for the, the video that we've imported. So. Basically, the video footage that we've got in here, um, it's kind of these long sequences of old movies. So there's some fights, there's some titles, there's some people in there, um, and there's some monsters and stuff. And we're gonna cut these together in a kind of uh, montage, some music tracks uh, in sort of a comedy style. So if we double click on one of these clips and we'll see some information about it. Um, so basically uh, in here, uh, we can see where we are in the clip. So that would have been where I double clicked when I was scrubbing down here. We can use this blue button in the middle to kind of move through the footage. Okay, so when you're trying to select a piece of a clip, you can kind of move through it um, and make your selections here. Okay, we can see uh, the time that we're at. So at the moment I'm at 56 seconds and one frame. So this time code that we see on the left is in hours, minutes, seconds and frames. Okay, and that's important kind of whenever we're thinking about editing. Um, so if we want to know the duration of our project, we have this time code popping up in different spots. So we have it on the timeline as well. And we have it here as the duration of the selection. So uh, one minute and 56 seconds and 18 frames. And if we double click on a different clip, it will bring up a different clip. So we're not actually editing at the moment. We're just looking at our footage, um, basically allowing us to scrub through we can use the play buttons here to play through, to stop the footage, to kind of step forwards and backwards one frame at a time, um, and then to go to the in point, which will be right at the beginning at the moment, and go to the out point. And in the, the kind of bin that we're in here, um, or in our project, we can also do things like search for video clips and stuff like that as well. We can increase the, the size of the thumbnails if we want to. Uh, big thumbnails or little thumbnails. We can change uh, how these are ordered. Okay, so we can order them by name or by media type. They're all movies, so they're going to order in the same way. Um, but we can kind of order things differently. So if you had sound and video in there, you could order them um, in different ways in that window as well. Um, it doesn't really matter too much for the moment. And um, we can view them as a list. So sometimes you'll want to see a list of the names rather than the, the footage. Um, so we can change all that uh, down here in the, the project browser. And we can also make new folders um, and new items as well in here as well. But to really do anything, we need to make a new project or a new timeline. So if we go to File and New, New Sequence. So New Sequence. And in here, we're going to get a whole bunch of uh, different options. And um, it's selected uh, DB Pal here for me, which is the footage that we're currently working with. Um, so normally when we're working in North America, um, we're working in NTSC. Um, that's kind of would be the standard definition or HD formats for here. Um, and when we're working in North America for shooting, we're working in 29.97 frames per second. But in the UK, we're working in 25 frames per second. So you can ignore this kind of setup after today. Um, but basically, this is the footage I've got to play with. So that's why we're working with it. Normally we'll be working uh, with most of the stuff you record on a phone um, will be in 1080p at 29.97 or 60 frames per second or 59.94 or different variations of that. What will happen when we drag the first clip on is it will recognize 
that uh, our sequence doesn't match our clip and it will try and match them up. Um, so normally the, the kind of format that you'll be working in um, will be similar to this DSLR um, 1080p 30 frames a second uh, format. So this is kind of pretty standard frame rate and resolution um, for, uh, for what we'll be working with most of the time. So most phones will shoot in 1080p, so the resolution of that is 1920 pixels wide by 1080 pixels high uh, in square pixels. Not all pixels are equal, um, but we'll talk about that later. Um, and that's this uh, one here that's telling us that it's square pixels. So when you're shooting on a DSLR or on a phone, um, and most uh, kind of off-the-shelf digital cameras, they're normally shooting in a square pixel, um, and that's becoming more the norm nowadays. Um, but earlier HD cameras actually shot in, I can't remember the resolution now, but it's, it's not uh, 1920. Uh, some of these other formats here, yeah, so see this one is 1440 by 1080. So it's actually using a stretched pixel where the pixel is 1.3 wide by one high. So it's actually a different pixel aspect ratio. So if you're ever taking a, a kind of still from a video, uh, we used to do it, um, sometimes it would squash it one way or the other because the pixel wasn't square. So if you're ever using archive footage, it's something to be mindful of that not all pixels are created equal. They're sometimes uh, square or rectangular. But most of the time now, um, they'll be square. But these 60 frames or 30 frames per second here will be most of the time what you edit in and it's good uh, kind of quality format for any YouTube video that you upload nowadays. 25 frames per second would be the, the kind of PAL equivalent or the European equivalent of that. And 24 frames per second um, is supposed to be more like of a film look that people use. So sometimes people will shoot in 24 frames per second um, to give it more of a film-like look. At 24 frames per second when you're shooting, that it lets more light onto the sensor when you're shooting. So it kind of has a different effect. So, but we're going to use uh, for the moment uh, this DV PAL um, standard uh, 48 kilohertz format, okay? And that's the same resolution as the, the kind of footage we're, we're working with. So what that means is by editing in the same resolution as the footage that we're working with, um, we're not going to make the timeline do any rendering or anything like that. So if we took this footage and we edited it in HD, then it's going to have to enlarge it and actually we're going to make the computers do more work and we'll start to hear the hard drives whizzing and stuff like that and we don't want that yet. We just want to chop stuff together. So DV power is fine. There's some other more advanced settings, but we don't really need to get into those. Okay. So we'll click OK there. Um, once you've created your sequence, um, it'll be called sequence one um, in your bin here on the left, your project. Okay. And then the timeline will kind of come to life here as well.